Today we're going to be reviewing a new cookbook that Doug got. From our favorite dog from childhood, Snoopy. Uh, close. Snoop Dogg. What did I read? Don't let me hang in. <laughs> Today we're going to be reviewing the number four cookbook on Amazon when you search for Snoopy Cookbook. Snoop Dog. It's maybe a little bit of a joke, maybe a little bit of a brownie recipe. Okay, so who is Snoop Dog? So he is an internationally acclaimed rapper, has lots of really big songs. Um, he's also well known for being a recreational plant enthusiast. Hmm. And he's actually done some cooking on TV with Martha Stewart. And so he's released this cookbook from crook to cook. <laughs> he also likes puns. Oh, I like puns. One of his things was dog father. Yeah. <laughs> you guys run in different circles. I get it. Okay. <laughs> All joking aside, I did read this cookbook. It's very unique. It's not just about the recipes that are inside, but he tells tales and anecdotes throughout. He writes his intros and stories the way he talks, so I thought maybe we'd give you a sample of that. Welcome to my kitchen by Snoop Dogg. Man, I must have been around the world and back hundreds of times during the course of near three decades. But the food on the road? Well, that's hit or miss at best. Combine that with the dog not being the most adventurous Anthony Bourdain type when it comes to grub. Doesn't always make it for the most splendid of occasions, you dig? That's why when I hit certain cities, I know to hit certain spots where they got the right heat and flavors. I'm far from a young pup. And like a real seasoned playa, my tastes have evolved over the years. But while I've learned how to get down with that top-notch cuisine, I'm still prone to keep it way hood and some of those LBC classics. So this book is broken into several sections. It's got some opening words by Martha Stewart. And then it has an introduction where he talks about his kitchen, he talks about his pantry, his fridge, and his favorite restaurants. Then there's six chapters of recipes broken into categories like breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, desserts, and even parties. So I thought it'd be fun for us to kind of go through the book and maybe look at a few of the quintessential recipes in each section. Before we even get to the recipes, the sections on his pantry and his refrigerator give you the sense that this is a down-to-earth cookbook. This isn't some fancy thing. Beginner and intermediate cooks can cook right through this book with no problem. I mean, the champagne may be a little much. So chapter one is breakfast. The recipes in here are all pretty straightforward. We're talking things like bacon and eggs, not too complicated. Uh, the standout here is the soul food. It has biscuits with the thickness gravy. So this kind of hits our first issue with the book is that there aren't pictures with every recipe. The serving sizes are great, the recipes are straightforward, uh, and the layout is okay, but sometimes in a cookbook you like to see what you're about to make to really, you know, whet the appetite. I mean, what is the thickness gravy? Is it just regular gravy that he's named the thickness? Or is it something special that I need to know about? I wish I could just see a picture of it, that's all I'm saying. I like pictures. I know. And really, several of the recipes do have really great pictures, so it's just a little disappointing. But some of the most colorful inserts in the book are his theme on munchies. Why would he have a theme on munchies? You should ask your mom. Well, according to particularly mean YouTube comments, you're my mom. So this munchie spread is all about his cereal favorites. Cereal favorites? Favorite cereals. So this, uh, so this munchie spread is all about his favorite cereals. If you want to know his opinion on Honey Nut Cheerios or peanut butter, Honey Nut Cheerios or Fruit Loops, this is the book for you. I've always wondered. That's why I bought the book. So chapter two is all about lunch. It's basically salads and sandwiches. Nothing's too terribly complicated. The standout, once again, is the soul food with the fried bologna sandwich. That one deserves a full page spread picture here. Very nice, very nice. Uh, which apparently uh, is just bologna, white bread, yellow mustard, American cheese, and barbecue potato chips. I will point out that, it, the, once again, the serving size, though, says it serves one, but he shows an entire stack of <laughs> fried bologna sandwiches. So in a lot of these recipes, he gives you the basic way of making it, and then he includes a little extra if you wanted to make it something a little special. And then in this example, he makes it with smoked Gouda. Mm. Smoked. And taking a little pause for a lunch reading from Snoop Dogg. The lunch brisake. Come on, dog. it's just us. You ain't gotta lie to kick it. 
You know, you really ain't rushing out to get food on your lunch break. You just dipping out for a quick smoke sesh, cuz. We already know. That's cool. Do you. I ain't tripping. But on those days when you really gotta get some work done and ain't even got a minute to grab a sandwich, grab some apples, some grapes, a little of this and a little of that, mixed with some honey and peanut butter. Now you've got the energy to deal with your punk co-workers for the rest of the day. And hey, yo, spray a little something on yourself before you dip back in. You wanna keep that job, right? Now, pop your collar and make that laptop do what it does. Chapter three is dinner and has a large number of dinner recipes. This is also where we find that millionaire recipe we would expect to, lobster thermidor. But don't worry, there's also mac and cheese, tacos, and chicken wings. So this section also has a recipe for seared filet mignon, though it does suggest that you learn how to pronounce it. I'm assuming mignon is right. There's no pronunciation guide here, so get with it, Snoop. So he sears his steak on a cast iron skillet, just like we've done in the past. If you don't have access to a grill, uh, it can work pretty well, actually. If you wanna see more detail, you can watch our video on that topic. Uh, after you're done with this one, though, finish this video, drop comments, like, etc. Then go watch that video. It's a, it's a process. <laughs> well, but we have to talk about it. <laughs> did you recognize this one? I did recognize this title. All right, this is the Baby Got Back Ribs. Moving. Oh, gumbo. Oh, no? All right. So chapter four is about desserts, covers your basics. Pies, cakes, banana pudding, brownies. So I carefully read through this brownie recipe, and he mentioned some herbs and spices he likes to sprinkle in, but he doesn't tell me which ones. I got a whole drawer full of herbs and spices over here. Which ones am I supposed to pick? I don't know, it says it uh, really gives them a kick, so I'm assuming it's gonna be like chili powder, cayenne, Ooh, something like that. Okay, yeah, something spicy. Yeah, go shorty. It's your birthday, cake. That one gets two pictures, one with the candles lit, and one with the candles blown out. But I don't get to see what the thickness gravy looks like. I'm still a little disappointed. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, I'll move on, but. So this chapter's munchie layout is on candy, and I happen to agree with him about the starburst. He doesn't like the lemons, but prefers the reds and pinks. Me too, Snoop. Me too. Don't we always buy those Flavo Red things? Yes, they're the best flavors. Although orange is pretty good too. And yellow. Nah. So chapter five is drinks. Of course, this one starts off with gin and juice. Why? Because it's a song. Oh. I particularly like the recipe that he has here for gin and juice. Uh, ingredients, gin, orange juice. Straightforward, okay, now the instructions. Take some gin, take some juice, mix it up, that's it. Seems pretty straightforward. Could write a whole song about that. <laughs> and of course, with the photography, it has a full double page spread of a red Solo cup for gin and juice. My favorite was the recipe for a Singapore sling. I had one of those once. It's like drinking fruit punch. Really dangerous. Like tea from Long Island. It's like the drink Pringles. Bet you can't drink just one. <laughs> Pringles, the bet you can't just eat one. That's Lay's. Dang it! It's not Pringles, it's Lay's. And now, another reading. M-O-P, mash out potatoes. This is where you load up that plate and make sure you're getting ready for the coming cold season. Even in Cali, in November, the weather starts to dip, so no need to keep that beach bod. Just as well, because you know I add that cream to give my mash that classic buttery texture. It's the holidays. Relax your mind and let your conscious be free. Like Rick James says, it's a celebration, b****s. Chapter six is about parties. He plans four party menus for you, from Thanksgiving, a football game, game night, and even a beach party. This is really like the most unique chapter I've ever seen in a cookbook. Yes. Uh, it has full recipes, multi-courses, it has full playlists of music that are Snoop Dogg certified. And the music actually covers a wide variety of genres. It's not just a bunch of playlists of just his songs. It's true. Well, <laughs> there's, you know, so, you know, good job branching out. And because these are for parties, they're for much bigger serving sizes. Most of them are for eight people. Some of them even go up to 12 people. But once again, if you were hoping to see a picture of any of these recipes, you're out of luck. So before we get to our final verdict, if you've liked this so far, hit thumbs up. 
now. Who is this cookbook for? First and foremost, if you're a fan of Snoop Dogg, this book will interest you. If you have even a slight interest in cooking, you will find a lot of his personality in this book and you'll enjoy these recipes. And you'll probably get a lot more of the name puns than we did. This cookbook is not PG, so this is not for the younger set. However, if you know a teen or young adult who you'd like to get interested in cooking, this may be a great way to do it. All these recipes are really good for beginners to intermediate. If someone is interested to listen to Snoop Dogg, they might actually listen to his recipes and start to learn how to cook. It's not a bad way to intro someone into the world of cooking. So now, you go put on some Snoop Dogg and I'll make you a fried bologna sandwich. Nice, yeah, we'll both learn something.